welcome. Thank you for joining us, the Neighborhood Church Online. Let me say happy Thanksgiving to each of you uh, this weekend. We're gonna go in in a second and just experience the time of worship. Pastor John's gonna continue in the series, Teach Us to Pray, and uh, it's just gonna be good. So why don't we head on in and uh, join in worship right now. You guys kept with it pretty well. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the way he's changed our lives. It's all about Jesus. The power of his blood can be denied. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the covenant.
Jesus. It's all about the way he's changed our lives. It's all about Jesus. The power of his blood can't be denied. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the covenant he made. It's all about Jesus. Well, we're going to share some family news with you, but before we do that, we're going to look at our memory verse for this month. It's found in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. At the Neighborhood Church, we highly value the memorization of Scripture. And this comes up to you from the New Living Translation. In Matthew 6, 9, it says this, Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Matthew 6, chapter 9. And so I just encourage you over this month to continue to memorize that and just get that in your heart. I'm going to mention our Connect card. Um, you can fill that out online at our website. Make sure if there's any questions you have, any way we can connect with you. Love for you to fill that out. Love to get to talk to you. Also, ways to give are coming up on the screen right now. Those are many of the ways in which you can continue to give. Thank you so much for your faithful giving to our church community. 2020 Capital Project during the month of October. Uh, we are wanting to replace our two dying uh, projectors, PowerPoint projectors, they are on their last legs <laughs> and uh, we don't want to be caught some weekend without having that solved. So we're looking at an upgrade to our PowerPoint projectors, some screen improvements. Uh, we anticipate the entire cost of this to be about $20,000. Uh, we are buying a really top quality uh, PowerPoint projector simply because they last about seven or eight times as long as the cheaper ones we keep on having to replace. So help us with that. Mark your envelopes. 2020 Capital Project. Let's try to get this done and enter 2023 with all of this stuff done and paid for. And then uh, this weekend is exciting on two levels. Weekend of prayer and fasting, gathering to pray and seek God's face. This is fundamental, essential to the life, health, vibrancy, fruitfulness of any church. So we come together, we pray, we take time this coming weekend to fast. 7 p.m. at Pine House on Friday night, time of worship. Our teenagers will be joining us, our youth will be joining us. Absolutely thrilled about that. Uh, come on out and support them. And then 10 a.m. Uh, Saturday morning prayer here at Pine House as well. And then it's water baptismal weekend. If you've not been baptized in water, uh, we really encourage you to take this step. Make it your next step in your spiritual journey. Pastor Jordan. I'm going to mention something quickly about neighborhood groups. They've started and we'd love to have you join a group. And so if you come by the church, we do have these, both these neighborhood group booklets that you can go through and you can find out which groups are happening. You could also, if you're interested, you want more information, email the office, give us a call. We'd love to chat with you and get you connected with the group. One group I'm going to highlight today is Devin and Don Ferguson's family group. They meet Thursday evenings, 6.30 p.m. in the home. Kids are welcome. Um, if you and your family are looking for other families to connect with, get to know, 
learn the scriptures and just grow together in your faith, I highly encourage you to check it out. Devin's also on our board of deacons here at the church, and uh, I just know you'll have a good time if you go there. One more thing I'll mention is Next Step Eats uh, is happening. We're going to have you come together. This is for anyone who's uh, really come to our church really since last spring. If you haven't attended one of these Next Step Beats, we want you to be there. It's happening Wednesday, October 19th, 6.30 p.m. Same time as our kids' night here at the church. And so if you want to drop off your kids and come join us, we'd love to have you. But if you are been new here, if you're checking us out, if you have not attended one of these, check out Next Step Beats. We'd love to have you. Looking forward to that evening so much. Thank, thank you, again. Pastor Jordan. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. And uh, I want to draw your attention to the screens, if you're not looking at them yet. That is pictures of my dad, my father. Uh, dad was known for a lot of things. Dad was a pastor, dad was a preacher. The people in Albania would call him an apostle. He was a journeyman carpenter, a grandpa, a great grandpa, a husband, and a friend to many. But to me, he was my father. To me, he was my father. The disciples came to Jesus and said, after seeing that he'd been away praying again, he was always praying, he's praying again. They said, uh, Lord, Teach us to pray. And Jesus said, Luke 11, verse 2, when you pray, say, Father. When you pray, say, Father. It was a little over a year ago that I led my father's funeral. And in speaking at dad's funeral, I said that my dad had never done me any wrong. And I meant it, and I believe it. I also recognize as we're unwrapping tonight the truth that when we pray, we're supposed to say, Father, <laughs> that many of you can't say what I can say. The word Father does not bring up a bunch of warm, fuzzy feelings to you. Former President of the United States, George W. Bush, uh, made this statement, we know that children who grow up with absent fathers can suffer lasting damage. They're more likely to end up in poverty or drop out of school become addicted to drugs, have a child out of wedlock, or end up in prison. Fatherlessness is not the only cause of these things, but our nation must recognize that it is an important factor. Having a good father unquestionably makes a difference in our lives. Psychology Today uh, reports that fa how fatherless children are affected. 
the first thing Psychology Today reported that is that truancy and poor academic performance are affected. 71% of high school dropouts are fatherless. Fatherless children have more trouble academically, scoring poorly on tests of reading, mathematics, thinking skills, Children from father absent homes are more likely to play truant from school, more likely to be uh, excluded from school, more likely to leave school at age 16, and less likely to attain academic and professional qualifications in adulthood. Fatherlessness affects children. <laughs> Second thing psychology today said is delinquency and youth crime involving violent crime. 85% of youth in prison have an absent father. Fatherless children are more likely to offend and go to jail as adults. Third thing psychology today says life about life chances as adults fatherless children are more likely to experience unemployment have low incomes remain on social assistance and experience homelessness and the last thing that psychology today reported was behavioral problems fatherless children have more difficulties with social adjustment are more likely to report problems with friendships and manifest behavior problems. Many develop a swaggering. My wife says I swagger when I wear cowboy boots. Many develop a swaggering, intimidating persona in an attempt to disguise their underlying fears, resentments, anxieties, and unhappiness. I recognize in this room tonight that there are people who have likely experienced the pain and the disjointedness that comes from being a part of a fatherless home. Two thousand and seven uh, UNICEF report uh, said that the well being of children in economically advanced nations this stuck out to me economically advanced nations US, Canada, United Kingdom rank extremely low in regard to social and emotional well being in particular Many theories have been explored to explain the poor state of our nation's children. However, a factor that has been largely ignored, particularly among child and family policymakers, is the prevalence and devastating effects of fathers' absence in children's lives. And so Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father, and the first thing I have to unwrap for many is the bad experience they've had with their earthly father. And so tonight I want to introduce you or reintroduce you to the goodness of the Heavenly Father who is perfect in all of his ways. When you pray, say, Father. What's Father like? First John chapter 3, uh, verse 1, first half of it. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called the children of God. Almighty Creator God, the God who has always been, always will be, the God who keeps the world rotating and functioning. 
He loves you. And his love for you is a pure love. And he doesn't love you from a distance. He loves you so much, he calls you his children. If you've asked him, friends, if you've accepted his love, guys, you are his son. Ladies, you are his daughter. That's the great, great love of God. And so when I would go to visit my dad, talk to my dad, I didn't go up to him and say, hi, carpenter. I didn't go up to him and say anything but, hi, Dad, hi, Dad. When you pray, say, Father. Ephesians chapter 3, uh, verses 18 and 19. This is Paul praying for the church at Ephesus, and he prays that they would have strength to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. If you're filled with God, if you really know God, you're going to understand that his love for you is immeasurable. It's high and it's deep, it's wide. And you, you need to be filled with the knowledge of that. God loves you, your father loves you. Romans 8, 38 and 39. I'm sure that neither death nor life, angels or rulers, nor things present, things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So here's the simple, simple, simple truth, friends. Your father does not have bad days. And your father never gets to the point where he says, enough on you, I'm giving up on you, I'm leaving you. Your heavenly Father will never, ever desert you. Your heavenly Father will never, ever desert you. Nothing will separate you. Nothing will separate you from God's love, God's concern for you. That's the Father. That's the Father. Ephesians chapter 1. And verse 5, he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ. <laughs> God's plan from you, for you, from the beginning is to be a daughter of God. God's plan for you from the beginning, guys, is for you to be a son of God. It's been his plan all along. <laughs> And I want you to understand this is who you come to when you enter the place of prayer. You say, Father. I know Christians have been arguing about this for years. And some want to pray to Jesus and some want to pray to the Holy Spirit. Let me make this absolutely clear to you. There is no jealousy in the Trinity. And Father doesn't get all upset with you if you pray to Holy Spirit. This is not an issue with God. What matters here 
is our understanding of who we're coming before when we pray. And Jesus clearly taught and gave us the example of praying to Father. Luke uh, 11, verse 2, we've already looked at it. When you pray, say, Father. Now, was this something he taught all of us to do? When you pray, say, Father, and then he went and did his own thing? Or did Jesus actually live what he preached? It's a novel concept. When you pray, say, Father, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 6. When you pray, go into your room, shut the door, pray to your Father, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The consistent teaching of Jesus is pray to the Father. John chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus is praying here. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father. The hour has come, glorify your son, that the son may glorify you. John, same chapter, down to verse 11. I'm no longer in the world, they're in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, who does Jesus consistently pray to? Jesus, who was the Son of God, prayed to Father. Guess who you should pray to as sons of God? Guess who you should pray to as daughters of God? Father. Father. At least a couple of you are getting it. Matthew uh, chapter 11. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Huh, he's praying. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. For such was your gracious will. I think Scripture, New Testament revelation, but friends, this is not some New Testament discovery. People actually prayed to Father in the Old Testament too. <laughs> But New Testament especially, we're taught to pray to the Father. So let me ask you this question. We talked about the why last week in prayer. If we don't get the why, none of this will mean anything to us. I want to talk tonight about why this is important. Why this is important. Well, I'm going to give you four suggestions from my pondering and thinking about this. And the first one is when you go into God's presence and say, Father, there's this sense of endearment and affection that accompanies that. This is what's describing God's attitude towards you. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. The Lord your God is living among you. He's a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness, with his love. He will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. I like uh, what Blue Letter Bible says about rejoice over you with joyful songs. What does rejoice over you mean? Literally means dance, skip, leap, and spin around in joy. I want you to get this picture in your heart of Father God's love for you. You are not some distant person he never thinks about. Heavenly Father is dancing, skipping, leaping, and spinning around in joy over his love for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
the affection, the affection of the Father. When you come before him, when you go into his presence, this is a term of endearment. It's a term of affection. Father. 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 I, uh, we meet for prayer at 9.45 a.m. as a church, Tuesday to Friday. Thursday, we meet at the North Point venue. Never really know how these prayer times are going to go. They're all different. But for some reason, Friday, I felt compelled to read a bit of Psalm 139. I got to these verses. How precious to me. Everybody say to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. Friends, by the Spirit, Spirit, help us here get a glimpse of the Father's love for us. How vast is the sum of them. God's thoughts towards you, towards you, not to, towards the person who's sitting beside you, towards you, towards you. His thoughts are so vast, they are more than the sand. You ever taken a bucket of sand and tried to figure out how many, whatever do they call those pieces of sand there are in the bucket? You'd get tired and overwhelmed very quickly. God's thoughts towards you are more than the sand. And when you get to 80 gillion or whatever the highest number is you can think of, I don't even know if gillion's a number. But when you get there, you need to also understand that the person you came to church with tonight or the person you're sitting with tonight, that person has as many thoughts towards them from God as you do. It's the love of God. God has no favorite kids. God loves you, and he never stops thinking about you. When you pray... When you pray, say, Father. Father. Father, we have an echo in the room. When you pray, say, Father. Father. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a new line here. <laughs> so when you pray, you get into God's presence and... You say Father because it's a term of endearment. It's a term of affection. But here is what's so amazing about this term, Father. It's not all lovey-dovey. He never stops loving you, never will. But the second part of this is authority. Authority, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in time to help in time of need. Anybody here have a throne room? You, you only have a throne room if you've been vested with a great deal of authority. When we come before God and we say, Father... We're going into the throne room of God's grace. Ephesians chapter 1, 
Uh, verse number 17, first part of it, and then I'm going to take you down to verse 20. So the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him. So we're talking here about the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the true God, is the Father of glory. And he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So who's in the throne room? Jesus is sitting at the right hand of who? The Father. The Father. When you go into God's presence and you say, Father. <laughs> when you go into God's presence and you say, Father. You are going into our place of authority. My dad was a good spirited guy. My uh, dad had a great sense of humor. And my dad loved laughing at uh, jokes and situations. But my dad was also the head of the home I grew up in. <laughs> and I still remember the day when he was heading off to work where he said, John, uh, grass needs cutting. And I started to cut it. And then a friend came up and says, we're having a game of football down at the park, come. And I went and played football and played football and played football and played football and Dad got home before I finished cutting the grass. And Dad made it very clear that when he asked me to do something, he expected me to do it. That got implanted deep in my heart and another place that day. <laughs> it's not just all affection, friends. When you come into God's presence and you say, Father, you are acknowledging not only the fact that he is mad about you, loves you deeply, crazy about you. He's also the, he's also the authority in your life. Not my will be done, but your will, Father, your will. third thing that saying Father should bring to us is some assurance. Let us then draw near with confidence. My dad, and certainly my mom was a part of it, but my dad just looked after us. I didn't once think about the mortgage. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a mortgage. Don't think I really comprehended mortgages till we'd been married about three years and bought a house. I didn't worry about the mortgage. I knew Dad had it. Dad had it covered. Utilities. What are utilities? Didn't think about utilities. Why? Because Dad had it all looked after. And when we go into the place of prayer, there's this tremendous sense of peace and assurance that comes into our soul 
because we remember who we're praying to. We're praying to Father. And Father's got it, friends. Every one of your needs, everyone, is going to look after. And you should go into God's presence with assurance, with confidence. King James Version says boldly. Why? Because we have confidence. I think if the Christian bookstores and the podcasts I listen to and even the books that are in my office, my study, are any indication of where the church is at, I think we've forgotten about the Father. All kinds of books about Jesus, all kinds of books about Holy Spirit. Not much written about Father. <laughs> but let me remind you of what John 14, verse 6 says. Jesus is talking, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. Jesus is the way, Father is the destination, friends. Jesus is the way, Father's the destination. You need to learn how to come into Father's presence. Yes. And have assurance that he cares deeply for you. And then last point. No, go back a verse. I think that was important. Ephesians 1, 17 to 20. Pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, you may know what is the hope of, to which he's called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Uh, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Friends, we need to get to know Father. We need to get to know Father. Some of you uh, know a little bit about me. You know, I don't miss church too often. Most of you know I'm Pastor John. Some of you know my last name. You know, I could lose a little weight and that it seems to be easier to lose hair than weight. You, you know those things. But there's a difference between knowing about someone and knowing them. It's a huge difference. And I fear that Christians have been satisfied to know a lot about God, but friends, God is calling us. God is calling us. Father is calling us. Come get to know me. Know me. I uh, thought I knew Donna reasonably well when I married her quite a few years back. And then she kept on surprising me. I didn't know that about you. And so we've been on this journey of not just knowing about each other, but deeply knowing one another. 
and now, and Donna, don't change the system. And now, Donna hardly ever surprises me. I pretty well know how she's going to respond and react and what she's going to say. Um, where does that come from? We move beyond knowing about to knowing. What's God's heart for you, friends? That you have a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Not knowing about him, friends. We've settled there too long. But we know him. Last point. Accord. John 17, verse 1. Jesus had spoken these words. He lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you. We go down in the chapter. We've already looked at this. Verse number 11. I uh, am no longer in the world. There in the world, I'm coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you've given me that they may be one even as we are one. When you pray, friends, and you have this revelation of Father, and you have this revelation that you are a son of God or you are a daughter of God, and you get into his presence, it changes everything because suddenly <laughs> you recognize you're not an island unto yourself. But you're part of the most wonderful family in the world. You're part of God's family. And you're surrounded by brothers and sisters. And your heart gets purer and purer over time. And you get the heart of God, the heart that God has for his kids. And your desire is, oh, Lord, help us to be one. Help us to be united. Help us to get along. Help us not to be making mountains out of molehills. Oh, Lord, help us, help us, help us. You're concerned. about the Father's family. You get a deep revelation of that in your heart. We're brothers and sisters. And coming into God's presence and saying, Father, cures us from selfishness that is so inclined to rule and reign in our hearts and destroy relationships. It's so important, friends, we get this truth. What you understand of God, how you picture God, what you understand of God, how you picture God, what your feelings are about God, determines how you live. And I would say even determines how, let me change that. Even determines if you pray. But when you get a revelation in your heart <laughs> that you're going into Father's presence, it changes everything because you're going into the presence of good, good, good Father, perfect in all of his ways. So, so my concern here, um, and maybe i just go to the very last slide, the very last slide in the roll. 
my concern here as we go through this series is that we not uh, just be getting a whole bunch of information in our heart, but that we're actually letting Holy Spirit teach us how to pray. So how does that how does that look in our uh, in our lives? Well, I think you need to friends find a place. We all need to find a place where we just regularly go like Jesus did. He regularly went, withdrew from all the hustle and bustle and responsibilities of life, regularly withdrew and, and sat in presence of Father sat in presence of Father. And so you begin to take time in your days when you just go to that place. You sit or you kneel or you lay down before him or maybe you're walking. But you say, Father, And as you say that, your heart grows in affection for the reality of who he is. I thank you, Father, that you love me. I thank you, Father, that I'm your son. I thank you, Father, that I'm never away from you and you never stop thinking about me. Father, Father, I love you and I thank you for loving me. I thank you, Father, for your authority. And Lord, there's so often times when I'm just a terrible brat and I want to do my own stuff, my own things. I run from you. I rebel. Forgive me. Lord, today your will be done in my life. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Father, you know the things that if I let them can bother me and begin to worry and Father I bring my needs before you today with the assurance that you meet all of my needs according to your riches and glory Father you own the cattle on a thousand hills and you see the needs in my life you see the needs in Pastor Don and I's life I'm not going to worry, I'm not going to fret, I'm not going to get upset, I'm not going to allow it to happen, because, Father, I trust you, I honor you. I walk through today with assurance, because you're your Father. Your Father. Thank you, Father, that I'm your Son. Thank you for your amazing daughter, Donna, and that you brought her into my life. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of working and serving with a whole bunch of brothers and sisters at the neighborhood church. Father, help me to love them as brothers and sisters, not some business partners. not even just as friends, but brothers. 
and sisters, help me to do my part in making sure the family's getting along, Father. I want to bring delight to you. Father. 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 When we get a revelation of who we're praying to, when you pray, say, Father, when we get the revelation of that worship band coming along, any sense of drudgery or works or, oh boy, pastor expects us to come pray again this weekend, it all goes out the window. Because it's time with Father. When you pray, say, Father, let's stand and uh, just thank Father tonight for his love demonstrated to us over and over again. A love that never leaves, a love that never disappears. Father, Father.
Well, thank you so much for joining us in the Neighborhood Church, our online service. We're going to continue throughout this next month or two in our series, Teach Us to Pray, and just continuing to look at our Father and who He is and all He He's done for us and uh, just the real comfort that we have in Him. And so thank you so much for joining us this week. We've had church. Now let's go be the church. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. We'll see you next week.